Um, so I guess related, obviously, but switching gears a little bit, you have done so much important work and I feel a kinship actually in the work, um, in terms of, uh, telling the story in such a vivid way of American empire as a bipartisan project, as a world systems, as a capitalist project of exploitation, of arms sales, of resource acquisition. I've heard some people say, some people, that uh, they take Donald Trump's tweets at, its, at face value and that even though Donald Trump is, you know, a massive asshole and even though he's kidnapping and terrorizing children and even though he's a white supremacist and even though he's a misogynist and even though he is pushing through every type of extreme Republican policy on the environment, on taxes, trying to gut health care. The dude, at the very least, is opposed to militarism and empire. Abby, you created the Empire Files. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is incredible. And I really respect your work uh, as well, because I feel like a lot of people have kind of bad takes on foreign policy and also just Trump's foreign policy specifically. You have a lot of people pushing him from the right on corporate media and kind of from the establishment blob whenever he, you know, does certain things like uh, announces troop withdrawals or announces kind of uh, diplomatic relations with countries like the DPRK. And then you have a lot of people who literally take his rhetoric at face value, like you just said. He tweets, endless wars must end, and people are like, oh, my God, he's an anti-interventionist, anti-war guy based on nothing at all. I mean, he presented himself during the campaign trail as a heartless warmonger who literally thought the violence of the war machine was too restrained. He stacked his cabinet with the craziest neocon outliers, ones even too insane for the Bush administration, and more generals than any other cabinet since World War II, a lot of them literal war criminals. I mean, then you can get into Venezuela, the coup, the sanctions... Um, sanctions alone, he has deployed the most catastrophic sanctions out of any president in modern history. Uh, 40,000 people dead in Venezuela under Trump since 2017. 150 at least sanctions added to Iran after upending the nuclear deal. Um, North Korea, Syria, Libya, throwing dozens of sanctions on those countries. Nicaragua, Cuba, under the troika of tyranny. And, and that's just sanctions alone, Michael. But I think people don't realize how devastating sanctions really are. And then you look at the troop deployments, right? I mean, the Syria troop deployment and Afghanistan, which he was credited for, for removing troops and ending the wars, he himself added those troops that he was removing. He literally put 10 times the amount of troops in Syria that Obama left with. And then he withdraws a couple hundred, leaves, leaves a couple hundred more to protect the oil very brazenly, and then just stations the rest of the troops in Iraq for this perpetual occupation that he also added and nearly doubled the amount of U.S. troops that were in Iraq. Um, and don't forget the Mosul massacre in Iraq that possibly killed 500 civilians at once. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The drone strikes, the drone strikes. I mean, I was the first to call Obama the drone king, but Trump has literally tripled drone strikes in every region of the world. And he's killed a massive amount of civilian casualties, increased by 215%. Syria, Iraq, Somalia. Um, he campaigned on bombing the shit out of terrorists and their families, and he definitely kept that promise. Right. And this just goes on and on and on. So it is mind-numbing. It is mind-numbing that people do not have an honest assessment, and I guess just don't take the time to really realize the damage that he is doing to expand and cement the empire not to mention the nearly trillion dollar defense budget and this expansion of this ridiculous space force. <laughs> right. Can't forget the space, right. NASA. <laughs> NASA's too soft. Um, but even that is, I mean, look, that's the deployment of space weapons. I mean, that goes back to Star Wars and the, you know, the fantasies of the Reagan administration, which they're fantasies, but they have real budgets and contracts attached to them. And also this guy, sits with, you know, MBS and brags about how many weapons he's selling uh, them. And, and the other part I just want to make on this, I mean, you outlined that all beautifully, right? But it's like, I think it's also a reminder too, we all got so used to, particularly with Obama, of like, well, that's a great speech, but 
look what you're doing in Yemen, right? That, this sort of thing. And that's 100% right. But I think people really overcorrected to, well, ironically, on one hand, either taking Trump at face value, which is ridiculous, or two, kind of being like, you know, actually saying what Bashar al-Assad said the other day, which is like, he's a great president because he says what he wants, which, you know, okay, great. You know, Bashar al-Assad, I'm sorry, is obviously a war criminal as well, as pretty much every single faction in Syria is, with the exception of the Kurds, in my view. But regardless, that that on a cultural level, it actually does matter on some level, right? We can call it Obama for hypocrisy and contradiction, but when he, or George W. Bush even for that matter, comes out on television and says, look, at least on the minimum level of like, you know what, don't harass somebody on the street because they're Muslim. We'll do that because we'll spy on them and put them in Guantanamo, right? <laughs> but yeah, right. the implication of what Trump is doing even on that cultural level, when he does say, yeah, I want to bomb the shit out of them, that actually matters. Like it, it matters in the same way that, yes, is America a profoundly racist country? Absolutely. But does it matter when the president, as a top town fashion, says that like, no, there's good people in Charlottesville? Yeah, it actually does. So there's a cultural diffusion here too that... I get why people don't like to talk in those terms because of the hypocrisy and the bullshit, but it matters. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, for a period of time, I was like, yeah, this is really fascinating that he's kind of lifting the mask of empire. And right. just like Assad said, you know, this is it's the most transparent presidency, I guess, we've ever had, even though he's, you know, closing the amount of troop withdrawals and also the civilian death count. <laughs> he actually has closed that number off. But yeah, I think that rhetoric absolutely has real world consequences. And you can see that with incitement of violence, the mass shootings done in Trump's name. I mean, just the right wing attacks alone in this country. Um, absolutely, this has effects and it's absolutely devastating. It is devastating. And people think that this is funny and they're like, oh, I love that Trump just says what he's thinking and he's just really honest. It's like, no, he's a con artist. And you've all been conned if you're playing into this. Right. And he could still be funny at times. You just have to know what he right. is. I have to defend myself. If somebody was sitting watching this and they saw me co-sign on saying it's fully not funny, they would have to call bullshit on me. But I do agree with your broader point 100%. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.